and then come and join us. So yeah, but that's where I got started. I, I actually I got started because of Tony Robbins. Oh, okay. I went to one of his events and it just uh, it just woke me up. I'd been going through battling with a circumstantial depression, you could say. It's just just a situation in my life that was had got me down over a period of time, and and I always uh, did motivation. I would always followed motivational speakers since I was young. My father used to listen to Zig Ziglar in the car as we drove around, so I was always exposed to it. But it wasn't until then that it actually came to a big head, and I realised that you know I need some help, and uh, I started searching started changing and then I went to this big seminar and just I just felt there was so much difference so much impact in my life that it just totally changed me like a whole different course yeah. and I was like wow uh, and so that yeah that's where I started and so now Robbins guy, some kind of a guru Tony Robbins he's I could say guru he's been doing what he does for about 42 years now um, which is the same age as I am. <laughs> so he's pretty much been doing his thing for ages. And uh, yeah, when he started, I think he was 19 or 20 years old, and he just started, started teaching seminars and, and found that he was good at certain things and he could move people, touch, move and inspire people to take different action. And we take a different action, we get different results. A lot of people get boxed in, we get, we get stuck in our way of thinking, our own mindset, and it's very difficult then to break free of that. But uh, I'd like to welcome you here tonight, so because we're going to we're going to have fun tonight. It's going to be a good night. Uh, I've prepared well. Uh, you'll notice that I don't use notes. Uh, it's all in my head. So what I do is I use a, a technique called a visual stack, which is a memory technique to remember everything that I'm going to say. And so all I have is a, a series of pictures in my head, and those pictures represent content, and that's how I run the seminar tonight. Okay, so. My name is Joshua Roy, and I've been life coaching and running seminars for the last three years, since 2015. I just mentioned before that I went to an event uh, with a man named Tony Robbins, or Anthony Robbins, and there was something that happened inside me at that event. I felt that there were some limiting beliefs that actually shifted, and suddenly I believed that I could do more than I was currently doing, and it took me on a whole new trajectory. And that's why I'm here doing what I'm doing tonight. So in 2015, I started a project called Access World Seminars. And that was simply a project that I decided to put together to help people to break out of their way of thinking. Uh, Einstein said we're boxed in by the boundary conditions of our thinking. And so now that I'd seen that there was a different way, I'd unboxed myself to some degree. I started then sharing it with others and I found the more I did share it with others, I found that they too could get great results. And you know, over the last three years I've helped people with depression, suicidal thoughts and feelings and any number of things. Pain, physical pain, uh, get rid of pain in anybody's body, uh, it's just incredible. So the mind is an amazing thing if you know how to use it and if you can let go of those limitations that we all have. Like we sometimes think, oh will this work? Well. There's a faith continuum that I talk about. And at one end of the scale, you've got fear, doubts, and limited self-belief. In the middle of that scale, you've got hopes and dreams. And at the far end of the scale, you've got absolute knowledge and total conviction. And so when we approach this sort of work with absolute knowledge and total conviction, miracles happen. And that's what I've, I've seen, and I can tell you countless stories about miracles that I've seen, but let's ease us in first by talking about relationships and how this can, or this sort of technology and these sort of tools and skills can help us with our relationships, either the relationship that we're in or the relationship that we desire to have. To gain more knowledge, now remember this, knowledge is not about information, it's about application. You see, data, that's information. But knowledge is information applied. So if you want to gain more knowledge, the best way to learn it, or to gain that knowledge, is to learn something and then do it. Practice it. Put it into action. That's how you gain real knowledge. Okay, it's not just by listening. People say, oh yeah, I want to get knowledge. And all they do is they listen, but they don't put their heart into it. They don't put their soul into it. And if you're just listening, then you're not going to gain knowledge. You're going to get some information, and that'll be great, and you go away with information. But if you listen with the intent to apply something, then you'll gain knowledge. Make sense? So understanding, we've got three concepts. There's 
knowledge, understanding, wisdom, and they're all different. So you've moved on to the next one. We've got knowledge here. Then you've got understanding. Now understanding is, let's say you're a mechanic and you're a car mechanic, but your friend has a boat. And so your friend who has a boat says, hey, can you look at my um, outboard motor? I want you to check it and you know, it's not running properly. And he says, but I'm a car mechanic. He says, oh, just come over and look at it. You'll work it out. So he goes over and he looks at this boat engine and he starts to piece things together and work out how it works because he's a mechanic. Even though it looks differently, he can still nut it out, he can work it out. That's understanding. You see, knowledge is all the stuff that he knows about cars. Understanding is, well, how can I apply this information somewhere else? Like, how can I apply this information that I'm learning to relationships? So how can I apply it to, you know, my physical health or to my spirituality, connectedness to God or the universe, whatever you believe God to be? So understanding is that one step further where we say, well, how can it work in this situation or with this person? We're doing a workshop. Yeah. The seminar will be in February, but I'll tell you more about that later. But the, the, the seminar is a couple of days. Today is just a workshop. It's more like an introduction, more like a taste to see if you know, we, we get along and develop a bit of a relationship to see if you want to then go further and go deeper into the mind and heart to really resolve some of those things. Because in the seminar, we go a lot deeper than we will here. Uh, because we actually go in and we do some mind work, we do some heart work, and we'll actually create changes at an unconscious level. You see, all true change is unconscious. Like we think that we're consciously making decisions, it's all unconscious. You see, even the act of brushing your teeth, you couldn't do it consciously. You just couldn't do it. There's too many steps involved. How many muscles are there between your fingertips and your shoulder? Anyone know? How many muscles? The answer is a lot. Okay, there's, there's a lot of, that's a technical answer. There's a lot of muscles, right? And so you'd have to consciously tell each single muscle group to move. And then you'd have to tell them to move up and down in exact synchronicity to get that brushing motion. You couldn't do it consciously. And so you do it unconsciously. Like now, because you're older and because you've brushed your teeth many times, or I hope you have, <laughs> you'll look like you have pearly whites. So because you brush your teeth many times, you can now do it unconsciously. And all you have to do is consciously say, I'm going to brush my teeth, and off you go. And you can do the motion. But you had to learn step by step how to move each individual muscle group at one time when you were little. And now you do it unconsciously. Make sense? So what we're going to do in the seminar is we're going to work with your conscious mind and also your unconscious mind. And we're going to create changes in both. Okay, so when you leave the seminar, you'll find yourself acting in different ways and not even knowing why. And just so you know though, it's all good stuff. Like very benign suggestions like, you know, more wealth, more, more success in relationships, all good stuff. And I think if you went out and spoke to everybody, they're all interested. Even the ones that say they don't want a relationship, actually want a relationship. What they don't want is a bad relationship. Either they've been burnt in the past, or they're going through some turmoil or trauma and they decide they've, they've had it. They, they've, or they've had two or three bad episodes. And they want to show, but even, even that person, deep down, they really want a relationship, but they want a good one. Believe that you can change. Now, isn't it interesting that some people believe they can change, some people believe they don't. I have a friend who is in a relationship and his wife spoke to him recently and he said, I just am who I am and I can't change. Some people believe that, that they cannot change. They're incapable of changing. I love what you said, that you have a belief that you can change. And that's a great belief to have. Even that sets you up for having a happier life. Because you believe that there's progress, that there's more to learn. And education is so valuable. When we learn something and apply it, we use knowledge, we use understanding, our life can be enriched. So listen very carefully tonight and I'm, I'm hoping that with the knowledge and understanding you take away, you can apply it into your life. You can use it to accomplish good, which is actually wisdom, and that you'll see changes in your life. Excellent, but thank you for coming. Good to have you here. Hi, I'm Anastasia. The reason I'm here is mostly to learn about relationships mm -hmm. because I've learned that what's important in life is the relationships you have with people and what you have in life. The relationships that you mm. have with the people around you, and um, when yeah, those feelings are based on relationships, and I want to have good feelings, 
in good relationships. And I know you're an expert. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's an expert? A drip under pressure. Sorry. An expert is a drip under pressure, that's what they say. There you go. Okay, but thank you, welcome. And it's good to have you here, it's good to have your energy here. Uh, I like what you said there about relationships being important. It, it really is the game of life, is relationships. The quality of your life is really the quality of your relationships. If you have good relationships, life is great. If you have a bad relationship, life can be horrible. It can be the worst thing ever. It can be detrimental. Going through a tough situation in a relationship or going through a divorce and they'll lose weight. They'll become really, no interest in food or whatever and they, and they look gaunt. They start to go withdraw and go into themselves more, that they can't think, concentrate. And you see the effect on the body. So it has an effect on our health. Has it affected other areas of our life too? It can, it can affect us at work and concentration and other things. So relationships are a big key. But then you see somebody who's madly in love. And isn't it a difference? You see them and they're healthy and they're looking after themselves. In fact, they look after themselves a bit too much. Some of them get so comfortable, they begin to put on extra weight and they become very happy and content. Okay, and that can be the, the case. So, one, you're losing weight. Another one, you're becoming too comfortable. Maybe she's just a great cook. I love it. You know, and then we can go that way. All right, but relationships. So let's get on, on with it tonight. And I want to tell you first of all about the intervention that happened. You see, in 2015, the light switched on for me. And I started rushing around teaching seminars and helping people to change their lives in whatever way that I could. So one of them was to teach people about the physical body, about emotional control, uh, about relationships to some degree. I didn't start on relationships, only a little bit there. Personal finances, I only looked into that a little bit as well. But the main ones that I looked at was health and well-being. And that's really where I started. And I was just putting all my effort and energy and time and focus into creating something magnificent. And my wife came to me and she said, we need to talk. Man, who's ever heard a woman say that before? <laughs> so she took me into a room and she sat me down and she had some pieces of paper and they were blank. And she said to me, or she asked me the question, she said, what's important to you in life? So what I know that she was doing was soliciting my values, my life values. What's important to me in life? And I gave her a number of answers and she wrote them down on the backs of the different pieces of paper which were separated. And then she said, what's least important? What can you get rid of? And I told her. And we started getting rid of certain things. And at the end of it, or towards the end of it, I had three things left. I had my wife, my beautiful wife. I had Access World and I had money. And these were the three top values that I was valuing at the time. And, and then she said, now you've got to let one go. You're going to jump on a boat and one has, it can't fit. There's not enough for all three. You can only take two of these. Which one are you going to take? And she said, and I don't want the answer. I don't want you to give me the answer I want to hear. I want you to give me the answer that you feel. And I, so I sat there for a moment and I'm really ashamed to say, I'm really ashamed to say that I actually chose my wife to leave my wife behind. And I couldn't even believe that I was saying it or feeling it or thinking it. And I started thinking about where have I gone wrong? Because my wife and I have a great relationship. We've done courses together, seminars together. And then I said, yeah, but if I get this money and if I make Access World seminars really great, then, then we can have the wonderful relationship we've always, always wanted. Because there'll be less stress, because the money will be there and things will be flying and everything will work out so grand. Who knows somebody who's like this? Well, who's been like this themselves and thought about, well, where is my focus? Is it really on the relationship or is it somewhere else? Anyway, after she brought this to my attention, I decided at that moment to change. I wasn't even aware of it. Now, isn't it funny that we're, we're so busy in life that sometimes we're not even aware of our priorities, our values? We're just too busy living our life. And if we get really honest with ourselves one day and stop and really think about where our effort and energy is flowing, we'll find out that we're not nurturing the things that mean the most to us. So I stopped and I changed and I decided that that's it. I'm focusing back on relationships. 
And so I started teaching more relationship workshops. And I, those relationship workshops spurred me into creating habits that would make my relationship secure and phenomenal. And after three years of running Access World, I, I believe that's the only thing that works in our life, is habits. It's the only thing that works. Now, you can do something for a day or a week, but if it's not a habit, if, if there's no long-term plan with that thing, it's going to fall, fall by the wayside at some point. And so I decided that the only way that I could make my relationship, number one, here and now, and number one forever, would be to create enough habits around my relationship that will consistently make it strong. So I started to develop habits. So we're here to find out about the game of relationships. The game of relationships. Now there's four ways you can play a game. Four ways you can play a game. The first way you can play a game, or not play the game, is you can refuse to play. You can say, I'm not going to do it. I refuse. So number one is refuse. And the game of relationships no differently. So we can sort of get, no, I've been burnt three times, I refuse to go back for more punishment. We refuse to play. We throw the towel in, we say, no, it's too much. Second way is we can pretend to play. I like this one, we pretend to play. And are there some pretenders? Even in relationship, there's pretenders. They're in a relationship, but they're not really in the relationship. They're looking after numero uno, they're looking after their own needs. That's it, bottom line. The minute their needs aren't being met, what do they do? They're gone. They pretend to play. That's the second way. The third way that we can play a relationship game, or any game, is we can play not to lose. So play not to lose. So we play defensively. We walk in there on the defense. We say, I've been burnt, I've been hurt several times, now I'm going in there with my guard up, and you, if you, the minute you say something, the minute you look like or act like my ex, I'm out of here. So we go in defensively. We play not to lose. And the last way to play is we play to win. That's it. Four ways to play the game. Any game. Is that interesting? Who can see that that applies to any game? Any game you play. Game of chess, game of cricket, golf, whatever you play, you can, you can do any one of these. Even at work. Even at work, absolutely. Work is a game. Money, money's a game. It's all a game. How are you going to show up? How are you going to play this game? What are you going to do? Are you going to play to win? Because that's what we're here to do is talk about how do we play the game and win the game? Because I want you to know this game is winnable. It absolutely is winnable. But it all starts with ourself. And that's why, we, that's why we're here. This is personal development 101. If you're not right, how would you expect somebody else to come in and complete you? But when you start really working on yourself and say, well, how am I offending? How am I upsetting? How am I being demanding? How am I taking too much, not giving enough? In what ways am I doing this? And we start working on those things, start to correcting some of the unconscious behaviours and conscious behaviours, because it happens both, it's conscious and unconscious. And now, you might ask, well, how do I get rid of these unconscious behaviours? Well, first of all, we've got to understand them. You see, a problem well stated is a problem half solved. So what we do is we really think about it, we might have to write it out until we can get a nutshell statement of what the problem is. Once we know what it is, we can deal with it. Uh, there's a friend of mine that I just sent a post on Facebook to today. He was actually at one of the seminars that I went to. I attended as an attendee, not as an actual instructor. And he was saying that he had a goal to lose weight and nothing's happened. It's just not working for him. And I wrote some encouragement. And the first thing that I said, I acknowledged him for being a man and actually asking for help. Because one thing that I find, especially through life coaching, is that men don't ask for help. They actually don't ask for help. 
They could be drowning and they're too stubborn to ask for help. So when a man asks for help, the first thing I'll do is acknowledge and say, well done. I'm glad you asked for help. We need to ask for help. Uh, women usually ask for help a little bit more. Okay, usually a bit, bit more. It's okay, it's socially acceptable. It's like men, don't cry, don't ask for help. But what if I'm drowning? Toughen up, princess. It's a bit like that. It is, is that right? That's how it works. That's how it is at work. That's how it is sometimes in our life.